Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to compare single disc clutches to multi-plate clutches. We're going to go over the operation and limitations of both and talk about what you need to know to make an educated purchase. The basic operation of a clutch is relatively simple. You have a flywheel that's bolted to the back of the crankshaft, a pressure plate that's bolted to the flywheel, and a disc that's riding on the input shaft of the transmission. As you engage and release the clutch pedal in the car, the pressure plate opens and closes, sandwiching the disc between the flywheel and the pressure plate, causing the torque from the engine to be transmitted into the transmission. Now, when the factory designed your OEM clutch, they needed to be able to manage the power output of the engine, offer good drivability and good longevity, but still be that fuse, that weak link in the drive line, that if the owner was being abusive to the vehicle, the clutch would fail first. They do this with a light pressure plate that anyone can hop in and depress the clutch pedal without a lot of effort and an organic disc mounted on a Marcel spring with a sprung hub and an isolator from the input shaft. All of those components of that disc make that clutch really quiet and smooth in its operation. As you increase the horsepower and torque output of an engine, it's easy to overwhelm the clamping force and disc material in an OEM clutch causing it to slip. At this point, you'll be ready for an upgrade. In order for the aftermarket to supply you with a clutch that can handle more horsepower and torque than the OEM one you're replacing, compromises need to be made. The aftermarket clutch industry approaches this with two ways. They're going to be increasing the clamping force of the pressure plate and the friction material on the discs. Now, if you have a vehicle that has good aftermarket support, you're going to find multiple manufacturers with multiple options for one particular vehicle, and this is where it can get kind of tricky. You want to use the OEM's approach and use the least amount of clutch you need to manage the power that you're trying to apply because again, the clutch is going to be the fuse in the drive line. You wouldn't wanna take a lightly modified vehicle and put a highly aggressive clutch in it because you're gonna remove a lot of drivability and add a lot of harshness to the vehicle and just make it undesirable to drive. One of the things you'll notice when shopping for an aftermarket clutch is the manufacturers will assign a torque value to different clutches. So they say, this clutch will hold 425 foot-pounds of torque, or this one over here will hold up to 40% more torque than stock. You need to understand that these values aren't found through some scientific method. They're found through user feedback and experience that they've gained over the years. One of the biggest problems with assigning a power value to a clutch is the end user. If the end user doesn't have a proper installation or a proper break-in period, they can take a clutch that would have lasted a long time and performed very well and ruin it in a very short period of time. In fact, if you're drag racing only, that means that you're not gonna have a long break-in period and you need to move towards clutches that are gonna allow that type of behavior. You have to take responsibility for your part in the clutch's success. If you have a bunch of guys that have had really good luck with a component and you're having a terrible time with that same component, it may be time to look at what you're doing. Like I mentioned before, there's no shortage of options when it comes to single disc clutches. You can have an organic disc that's impregnated with either brass or carbon with a heavy duty pressure plate and it'll work extremely well for mild builds. If you have an engine that's shifted at a very high RPM and you want a lighter disc that's gonna respond faster, a unsprung four puck like that may be the ticket, but you're gonna have a lot of sacrifices when it comes to stop and go environments. Since these aftermarket clutches are managing the additional horsepower and torque through both different friction material on the disc and different clamp load on the pressure plate, you need to be mindful that there's a point where the clamp load on the pressure plate gets so high that it's able to displace the oil that's protecting the thrust bearing when you depress the clutch pedal. This creates crank walk. Crank walk with a single disc clutch generally happens on engines that have 180 degree thrust bearings and high level pressure plates. The force you feel when you get in your car and push the clutch pedal down, that force is felt by the thrust bearings also, and it can get to the point that it displaces the oil, leaving the thrust bearing unprotected. Crank walk with a multi-plate clutch is a bit different. Multi-plate clutches have a faster ratio of pressure plate that are able to open and close very quickly that make them superior in a racing environment, but also require pedal stops. The stroke on a multi-plate clutch is shorter than what your pedal has available. So you're gonna use a pedal stop to make sure you don't overstroke the clutch on a multi-plate setup causing crank walk. Now let's jump into multi-plate clutches. There are some OEM applications that came with a multi-disc clutch because the engineers knew that a single disc couldn't cope with the power and offer the longevity needed. In the aftermarket, you can have a twin disc, triple disc, and even a quad, and the disc materials range from organic materials all the way to exotic carbons. As you guessed from the name, a multi-plate clutch has multiple discs. This particular one is a Clutchmaster's twin, and there's a flywheel, a disc, a floater plate, a disc, and a pressure plate. 
As the name implies, the floater disc is floating between the two discs and depending on the design, you may actually hear it when you depress the clutch by its distinctive ringing sound. Now your move to a multi-plate clutch may not be influenced solely by power capacity. If you're in a drag racing only application and you don't have the opportunity to properly break the clutch in, small diameter metallic discs like this work extremely well at the expense of drivability. If you're in an environment that has a lot of stop and go driving, discs like this are not exactly fun to manage. The pressure plates disengage and engage very quickly, leaving a very small window to get the vehicle moving. Something like that, you'd wanna look into a larger diameter disc that'll have better long-term wear or even some of the carbon offerings. It's also worth noting that some vehicles will use a different style throw up bearing when switching to a multi-plate clutch. You wanna follow the manufacturer's instructions or deal with an installer that's familiar with your particular vehicle. We appreciate you watching this video and hope that you're armed with enough information to make the right decision when purchasing a clutch. If you still have questions, feel free to reach out and we'll see you next time.